Thank you, Lord. I praise your name, God. Oh, Father, we, Father, we hallow your name. God, I pray that wisdom and revelation flows flow freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic force. Father, I pray that you speak to my vocal cords and you think through my mind, none of me and all of you. And God, I decrease so that the word of God may increase into the ears of these, your precious people. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit who has the liberty to move up and down every aisle in this building. Oh, move on every household, every living room, every family room. Move on every electronic device. Show yourself strong. Overwhelm us with your presence. Father, we thank you for the Word of God, the seed of the Word of God. We declare that we are good ground. Our ears are anointed to hear the Word of God. Our ears are anointed to hear your voice. Our hearts are good ground to receive the rhema word of God. Father, we thank you in advance for the miracles. We thank you in advance for the breakthrough. We thank you in advance for the deliverance. We thank you in advance for the wisdom, the revelation, the knowledge. We thank you in advance, God. Oh, Father, we give your name praise. We holler your name, God. We lift your name on high. We give you all the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. And it's in Jesus' name. And Excel Church said, Amen. Hallelujah. Well, here we go. Remember, uh, <laughs> this is the most, this is a holy interaction when we sit down before, uh, 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 sit down up under the Word of God and the Word of God is coming forth. So I want you to really posture your heart, your ears, and your spirit, man, and say, you know what? Lord, I'm ready to receive the Spirit of Truth. Lord, I'm ready to receive the Word of God. Lord, I'm ready to receive the Word of God. My heart is open to receive your Word, your living truth, and revelation from the inspired Scriptures. Now, we've been talking about the seed uh, of the Word of God, the, 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 the seed of the Word of God, and what it means to sit up under the seed of the Word of God, what it means to, 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 to read the Word of God out loud and hear the seed come back in your ears, and as it migrates to your heart, all of a sudden, the Bible says, Jesus said, if you, see, if, if, if you can see it with your eyes and you can hear it with your ears and understand it with your heart, he says, you're going to be converted. Converted to what? Whatever you need. W whatever you need. Converting, converting a, 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 a doubt to courage. Converting a poverty mindset to a mindset that knows with God all things are possible. Conversion takes place when we can see with our eyes, hear with our ears, and understand with our heart. And a lot of times we can sit in church for 5, 10, 15, 20 years and never understand how to receive the Word of God. Why? Because it's just like golf. It's just like basketball. You learn the wrong fundamentals, and the older you get, you discover real quick, oh, uh, I need to learn how to use my left hand. I need to learn how to really shoot the basketball. I don't shoot the basketball with the palm of my hand. I shoot it with my fingertips. I need to learn the basics of this thing. And what happens is, as you get older and you get mature and you come up against more competition in that sport, you realize real quick you missed the basics. You were excited about doing it. You were excited about going there, but you didn't understand the basics. One of the most powerful things about Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and all these guys is they'll tell you they mastered the basics. They mastered the basics. And receiving the Word of God, how to receive the Word of God, we're, going, we're talking about the basics. We're talking about how to, how to sit down and receive it. We're talking about how to meditate in the Word day and night during the week. We're talking about how to confess the Word of God and hear it out loud to build your faith up. These are all basics, but if we skip those things, we'll get down in life, and life throws us a curveball, and all we can say is, here's what most people say, God had to use a pandemic to teach you something. God doesn't need the devil's devices to show you anything as a believer. God does not need sickness or disease to show you anything as a believer. God does not need calamity to show you anything as a believer. He has the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. And he's, his love shows you everything you need to know. So don't dare, don't you dare let the world or anyone tell you, hey, the way that God gets your attention from the Word of God is he puts something on you. That's not the God we serve. That's not the God we serve. Satan comes to kill. He comes to steal. And he comes to destroy. And I'm telling you, right now, sitting up under this word, how to receive this word, 
He is coming with all he has to keep you from believing the basics of what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's like, <laughs> again, I relate a lot of things to sports. It's like this. Man, I'm ready, I'm ready to go play the game. Did you practice at all? Did, did, did you do any practice? Did, did you do any jogging, any conditioning? Any, did you use your left hand for, for 30 minutes? Did you use your right hand for 30 minutes? Did you shoot 100 jump shots? Did you, did you work on your defensive stance? Did you work on your, your, your eye-hand feet coordination? Did you work on any of that? No, I didn't do that. I'm just going to show up and play. Well, I promise you, you're going to be mediocre, average, and watch this. As the competition grows, you're going to find yourself digressing down. Why? Because there's people who eat and sleep with that basketball, and they dribble left, they dribble right, or whatever it is. But you got to fall in love with the basics first, and then Jordan and Brady will tell you, once you get on the court, everything else is instincts. <laughs> the things you see them do, the, the, the awesome things, it's, it's, it's like it's instinct. It's muscle memory. Why? Because you practice behind the scenes. And we're in this word, we're in this series called The Seed, the Word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I want to show you, the, show you this in the word of God so you can see it for yourself. And, and, and the seed, which is the word of God, you can meditate on it, you can study it, and it can get down in your, in, 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 in your spirit. God is good. Immediately have this ready for me in the, the Passion Translation as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, 12 through 13. Now Paul is talking to the Corinthian church, and he's talking about laboring with them, <laughs> laboring, laboring with them in the things of God. Verse 12. Now, we have received... Watch this now. Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might, watch this, know the things, watch this, that are freely given to us by God, of God. Verse 13. Which things also we speak not in words, watch this, which man's wisdom teaches but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at this in the Passion Translation. Glory to God. <clears throat> but he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who knows, who, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Next. Glory to God. So let's look at this in the King James. He says, now we have not received the spirit of the world. One of the most competitors or, 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 or the closest, the, the, Jesus says, don't be deceived by the deceivers and the riches. The, the world, the spirit of the world will try to rival the word of God as you receive the word of God. There's one thing I told my friend. Uh, talking on the phone, a guy I went to high school with, he said, man, you see what's going on in politics? Yeah, I see, it. I, 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 I see it and I don't see it. Why? Because politics is not higher than my God. Politics does not have more attention than my God has of me. Politics does not drive my countenance, my disposition, and, and, and my belief and my posture more than the Word of God. The Word of God is the final authority in my life. He was, and he was trying to cozy me into this and that and what ifs and all this. I said, man, if you live your life in a what if mode based on what politics and the world is telling you, you're going to be up, down, losing friends, gaining the wrong friends, gaining the wrong concepts in, as far as the world goes, and you're going to find yourself as a believer confused. Is politics important to know? It's important to know, but it is not going to drive our lives as believers. Who drives your life? Jesus of Nazareth. His principles, our Lord of lords and kings of kings, teaches us how to live from the seed, which is the word of God. He says, so be on guard against the world, the world's way of thinking. Watch this. But the, he says, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. When the word of God, the seed of the word of God is coming forth, listen, it is inspired scriptures that men wrote down, but it's inspired by God. We're not just opening something up, saying something and talking. No, we are reading and taking in and receiving the word of God that was, that was inspired by God and transcribed by men. So this is a holy interaction, and you want to take note of yourself as you posture yourself to receive 
this seed, uh, which is the word of God. <clears throat> Why do we not pay attention to the world? Why do we receive the word of God the way we do? It tells us that we may know things that are freely given to us of God. God is saying, you don't have to labor in 400 books to get to know me. You really don't have to go to 500 conferences to get to know me. That is time. The, time, the, 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 the quickest way to get to know me is to spend time with me. Spend time in the sea, which is the word of God. Spend time in prayer. Spend time consecrating yourself. I was talking to a friend yesterday. Uh, talking to a lot of friends yesterday. Talking to him. And uh, he's like, man, this world is, this, this thing is getting crazy. It's getting crazy out here. I, just, man, I can imagine what the rest of the year is going to be like. I said, uh, don't imagine it. <laughs> I said, don't even let your mind go there. He said, huh? I said, don't, don't even let your mind go there. Keep your mind fixated on God. Keep your mind fixed on the preservation of God. Keep your mind fixed on the angels of God watching over your life and over your family's life. Keep your mind on God. And I said, the most important thing we can do as believers for the rest of the year is to make sure we're consecrated before God. It's wild and wicked, and there's a devil on the loose, and he wants to kill, he wants to steal, he wants to destroy, he wants to confuse, he wants to put down, he wants to run people out of church, he wants to numb friendships, he wants to numb relationships, he wants to numb us to the things of God. I said, look, the consecrated life before God is going to carry you through the rest of the year. But this idea that we're not going to spend time with God and allow the world to bombard us with images of violence, things happening. Not saying turn the, turn the eye from it, because we have empathy for, 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 for humankind. We have that, but you got to know as a believer when it's time to say, you know what, I have too much of this going in my eye gates, too much of this going in my ear gates, too much of this going in my heart gate. I got to unplug from this. And the highest thing I can do for it is not do a post, it's pray and intercede. Pray for eyes to be open. Pray for wisdom to come forth. Pray for people. Pray for hurting people. Do that. Why? Because the consecrated life will give birth to a power in you that will release spiritual things to deal with worldly things. And you'll look up and your house has come. Your job has come. And things are coming down. Why? We're winning the war in the spiritual airwaves. You got to win the war in the spiritual airwaves. How do you do that? You got to have the seed, which is the word of God in you. Never be afraid to pray when somebody asks you to pray. If you, if you get nervous when somebody says, hey, go ahead and lead us in prayer, that lets you know right there. The only reason a lot of people get nervous to lead people in prayer is because what they're saying is, I want to protect me. I don't want to sound crazy. You want to protect you? You don't want to sound crazy? No, pray. If you got the word in you, it's going to come out. And we're talking about the seed, which is the word of God. Put it in you every chance you get. Now, do we have that ready in the Passion Translation? That scripture? Hallelujah. <clears throat> want to look at that. <clears throat> Glory to God. Let's keep going here. Let's go to John, uh, John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I want to show you something in the Word of God where, 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 where we know John preached, the Messiah is coming, one greater than me, so on and so forth. He's coming. I want to show you something in the Word of God uh, that really, it really, it really ministered to me. And last week after church, me and my family went home. We stood around in the family room, we just discussed the Word of God there for about 30 to 40 minutes. And um, it, was just, it, was just, it was just really good to, um, to do just that. <clears throat> John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 4. In him... In him, and he's right there in your Bible, right there in the scriptures, the inspired word of God. In him was life. So as we receive the seed, which is the word of God, there's life in it. Jesus is life. It was life. And the life that was the light of men, verse 5, and the light shineth in darkness. And darkness comprehended not, verse 6, there was men sent from God whose name, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, Here's what you got to know before we go to the next scripture. Here's what you got to know. You, 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 
Let's talk about John the Baptist. He was the number one ambassador for Jesus Christ and his coming. Number one. He was a number one ambassador for Jesus Christ. He, 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 he preached the kingdom of God. He preached that the Messiah is coming. He preached the inspired scriptures. He heard from God and he, he, he shared things. But let's look at this. Let's look at this and uh, let's see. Uh, let's go to John 1.23. Skip over to 23 real quick. Hallelujah. This is pretty fascinating uh, <laughs> when you read it. Uh, he said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way, verse 23. The Lord has said the prophet of Isaiah. And they which were sent were of, uh, were of Pharisees, verse 25. And they asked him and said, why baptize uh, you then if you uh, be not that Christ, nor Isaiah, neither that prophet? <clears throat> They're asking John. And John answered them saying, I baptize with water. For well, there standeth one among you whom you know not, verse 27. He it is who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoelaces or shoe latches I am not worthy to unloose. So John is John is John is doing the John is doing what what you what what, what a lot of people don't know how to do, and that is to defer to the greater. He's deferring to the greater. He's deferring to the greater. And he says, he says, watch this, verse 28. These things were done in Bethraba, beyond Jordan, where, jo where John was baptized, in 20, verse 29. The next day John see if Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. This is he, watch this now. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is prefer preferred before me. For he was before me, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, I am come, I'm coming here to baptize with water. Verse 32. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and an abode upon him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, unto him. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hmm. Verse 33. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto him, upon whom you shall see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. Verse 34. And I saw, I saw, <laughs> and I and bared record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after John stood, and two, two of his disciples, verse 36, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God. So John the Baptist saw, heard, prophesied, all this stuff, this is the Son of God. This is the Lamb of God. I want to show you just how fast pandemics, crisis, things happening in the world, if we're not careful, if we're not guarding our heart, if we're not guarding this seed, which is the Word of God, that's in us, that's designed to keep us built up, that's designed, it's, it's, it's the Word of God, the Word of God and the power of it, we can cast down things that's trying to exalt themselves against the power of God. I want to show you something. Let's look at, let's, let's keep looking at John. Let's, let's look at Luke. Luke 7. Let's go to Luke 7. So John has a revelation of Jesus. And as believers, we have a revelation of Jesus. But we're in a pandemic, and we're preaching about the seed, which is the Word of God. We're preaching about it, and I'm, 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 I'm beckoning, I'm begging our church. I'm begging, begging visitors, listen, listen to me. Get the word of God in your heart. This is not works. This is not self-righteous. This is, this, is, this, is, this is spirituality 101 for a believer. Get the word of God in your heart. John 15, we are the branches. He's a true vine. Stay connected to the vine, and the branch will not wither. Get the word of God 
in your heart. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Get Jesus in your heart. Get the, get the life of God, the spirit of truth, the living truth in your heart. And don't be swayed by what you see happening in the world. Because if you pay more attention to the world, you have a possibility or you, 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 you can possibly forget who your Jesus is. You have a crisis, you will forget who your Jesus is, and you'll try to solve it the world's way. You know, <laughs> I was thinking about this yesterday. You have people who call you in crisis. That's the only time they call you. That's the only time they text you. You have people who call you when something good happens for them. That's the only, that's the only time they call you. Something good happened to them, uh, 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 and, and, and they want you to know that. And then you have those who, who text you or just call you and say, hey, uh, Lord, lay me on your heart. I was thinking about you. Just wanted to encourage you and let you know X, Y, and Z. And, and I, you know, five years ago this happened, and I tell you, man, you was there. Or uh, I tell you, sister, you did this for me. I'm grateful to God for, for, the, for the connection, for the relationship. I'm grateful to God for, you know, you watching the kids or whatever. You have those. They don't, they don't text that often. But when they do, they put themselves second, and they put you first. That is the one you want to pay attention to. But a lot of us, a lot of us can approach Christ and our relationship with him on a crisis basis only. A lot of us will only mention Christ when, 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 when we get a breakthrough, when, we, when, 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 when our kids do something, or, or we close on the house, or we, or we get the bonus, and we approach him like, hey, I come to you when things are going bad. Hey. I come to you when I want to give you glory, which is good. I, I, I talk about you with my friends and family and my coworkers on my posts when things are going great. But rarely do I come to you and just let you know how much I love you and let you know how much I thank you and let you know how much I just thank you for what you did for me. You died for me and let you know that. Rarely do you have that. But that's the relationship you want. Why? Because you're acknowledging your Lord. You're acknowledging your, 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 your God. You're acknowledging there's a higher. You're acknowledging your surrenderance to it. You're acknowledging your posture to it. But watch. Watch, watch John. Luke 7. Verse 18. And the disciples of John show him, uh, uh, show him of all these things. And John, calling unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus. Sent them to Jesus. Now, 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 you heard what he said about him. Sent them to Jesus, saying, look, are you the one that should come? Wait a minute now. <laughs> are you the one that should come? Or do we have to look for another? Wait a minute. Hold on. So, you get locked up. Life changes, throws you a curveball, situations, circumstances not in your favor, pandemic comes along, the government's not going the way you want it to go, people are not saying what you want them to say, church is not doing what you want them to do, the pastor's not talking about what you want them to talk about, and all of a sudden, you shift. Look how fast John the Baptist shifted when circumstances changed in his life and he found himself locked up says, are you the one or should we go look for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Jesus, are you the one? Or should we go look for another? And in that same hour, he, he, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues of evil, and of evil spirits. And unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Verse 22, Jesus answered. Now, <laughs> here is the most fascinating thing about this story. It's, it, it blew my mind. It, 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 it floored me when I seen the interaction of this. So John the Baptist, preaching the seed, which is the word of God, hearing from God concerning the Son of God, claiming and, 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 and confessing and professing that this is the Lamb of God. I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes. And then he gets locked up and he begins to doubt what he preached. That should show us, that should show us how quick, if we don't pay attention to ourselves and our doctrine, 
how quick situations, circumstances can shift us clean away from what we used to believe. John the Baptist should teach us that. Let's keep going. The seed, which is the word of God. Then Jesus answered and said unto him, them, go your way. And you tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised. To the poor, the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Watch this now. Jesus said, you go tell John the very seed, which is the word of God that he was prophesying. I'm going to repeat it back to him. And that's what he needs to hear to know that what he was saying is true. Why do we know that? Watch this. (laughs) Watch this. You got to have people around you that reminds you of the word of God, that reminds you of the seed, which is the word of God in you. Even in your offense, they need to come back, not trying to kiss up to you. Hey, do you remember two years ago when you said, when you said this, 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 and this? Do you remember three years ago when you said you, you love your wife like this, 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 this? Do you remember two years ago, two weeks ago when you said God came? Do, do, do you remember that? Y- yeah, but I'm not talking. Well, I, look, there's nothing higher than repeating the seed, which is the word of God that came out of your mouth back to you in your crisis. And Jesus said, go tell him everything that he would say, everything that he preached that I would do, go tell him they're doing it. Because Jesus knew once John heard that, oh, it is him. It is him. Now, here's what's fascinating about this. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. (laughs) Boy, he began to speak to the people concerning John. Now, we want to see in the word of God, okay, he says, he says something to John, and he says something to the people. What did he say to the people? <laughs> what went ye out into the wilderness for you to see a reed shaken hmm. with wind? But what went ye out of for to see a man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are the kings and courts. But what went ye out for to see a prophet? Yea, I say unto you, much more than a prophet. Watch this. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say unto you, to you people, for I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is no greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people that heard him and all the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John, but the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against himself, being not baptized of him. What's the point of this text? Why didn't Jesus tell John how awesome he was? Why didn't he send a message back to John and, and tell John how awesome he was. Because Jesus knows, even though I have this admiration for John, even though I know how powerful John is, even though I know John was preaching uh, the kingdom come, thy will be, even though I know that he told him I was coming, even though I know that, there's something higher than what I think of John. There's something higher than what I think of John. And if I tell John these things, he's going to stay in his offense. I got to remind John of the word of God, the seed, which is the word of God, that he preached concerning me. I got to send the message back that what he preached from the spirit of God, let him know it's happening. And once John hears that it's happening, he'll be confirmed that I was right. What was Jesus showing us? Spiritual things are higher than natural admiration. The seed, which is the word of God, we've got to learn that the seed, which is the word of God, is superior. It, It is Superior to our emotional responses. you got to put the seed in you, place the seed in others, encourage the seed, which is the word of God, in others. Encourage yourself. Stir yourself up in the seed with the seed, which is the word of God. Why? Because it's higher. John the Baptist that got locked up, 
And man, I'm telling you, when pressure hits people, when pressure hits people, they're, 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 okay, when pressure hits people, they can tend to forget God. They can, they can have knee-jerk reactions. They go into questioning, so on and so forth. And it's like, man, what in the world happened? What happened, John? What, what, what happened? My God, you prophesied all these things. And Jesus knew, man, look, I can tell him how awesome he is. I got to remind him, though. I got to remind him exactly what he said. And you know why this should help us? This should really help us as believers. Because you're going to have people in your life, if you live long enough in the Word of God, you're going to have people long enough that you help, you stop everything to help them, you lay your life down for them, you encourage them, you counsel them, you, 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 you do all that stuff. And man, when pressure hits, if you're not Johnny on the spot in what they deem the highest pressure point of their life, they'll forget all that stuff. <laughs> if they're not steeped in the word. They said, where were you? What do you mean, where was I? What do you mean, where was I? I still think you're awesome. I still think you're great. You remember the word that, that, that you told me about. You remember the word that we discussed. You, you, you're a woman of God. You're a man of God. Go tell him that. Go tell her that. And man, they will take that, screenshot it, and say, I can't believe that they responded to me with the word of God and didn't come by my house and get totally offended. It's like, huh? I'm just repeating back to you the seed, which is the word of God. This thing is going to take care of you. This thing is going to be there 24-7. This thing is going to be there day and night for you. This thing is going to be there when the next crisis comes. It's, it's going to be there for you. That's why I'm encouraging you in the seed, which is the word of God. Why? Because I can't be it. And as we talk about the seed, which is the word of God, we got to keep it as superior. It is superior. It goes in and it changes. It's a two, the word says in Hebrews 4, it's like a two-edged sword. It goes in and it changes and rearranges us to come closer to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Mm, 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 mm. So what is the point? What is the point, again, of Jesus reminding John of the seed, which is the word of God that John preached, to, preached about him? What was the total point of this text? It's to let us know that no matter what it looks like, how you may feel, how tempted you may be to place your words above God's word in the time of crisis, in the time of pandemic, no matter how tempting it may be, choose the seed, which is the word of God. No, I choose to let people know. I, also, I, I, I choose to sit down and talk with people for two hours, give them my wisdom. I did a little zen over here and, and so on and so forth. And the law of the universe and all this stuff and the law of attraction. And you just, you're just talking, but you're not, you're not speaking from the inspired scriptures. You, you're not speaking from the holy word. Why? Because you deep down inside of some believers in the time of crisis, it's so hard for them to choose this is what the Word says. Because you know what they're afraid of? If I point you to the Word, you may not like me no more. I see your tears. And, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm weeping with you. I, I see the hurt, and I'm hurting with you. But you know what? Some people rather sit down and talk two hours from self than just to say, okay, now, let's not act as if, like Paul said, we don't have no hope. We got to stop right there. I, I want to kill myself. I don't want to live anymore. I just, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I don't know what, I, I feel like I'm going crazy. Da, 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 da. I never forget I was in a council session and, 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 and it was a, it, 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 it was a, a man of God and he was just all over the place and I just don't know. I just want to give up. I don't even know. I want my wife no more. 23 years. I, I'm not attracted to her. And, 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 and my spiritual father just sitting there and, he, and, and when the guy, when the guy finished, he, he said, you done? Are you done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, he said, okay, let's stop all the theatrics. Let's stop all of that. Here's what the word says. And here's the reality of, 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 of here's the reality of your life. Number one, you're not anointed. You're not anointed. You're a snake. You're conniving. You manipulate, so on and so forth. You scheme, you scam uh, believers. You, you, you're not anointed. I was like, oh my God. 
And the word says, based on 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the word says, here's what you need to really deal with, so on and so forth. And I really suggest that you take a seat from the poor because you don't want what's on your life coming off on your, on your people. You, you need to do that. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 um, um. And it's like, okay, what else did you want? Me to fall into your emotions? You want me to, you, you want me to fall into your emotions? You, you're in the John the Baptist mode right now. And my, my, my pastor chose the seed, which is the word of God. And I, said, and I was sitting there saying to myself, young and in ministry, this man's marriage is on the line here. This man's church is on the line. What, what, what in the world was that? What was that? And I learned right there, there's something higher than your emotions, Derek. When you see, you can't do nothing for this. You can't solve this. This has been nine years of hurting this marriage. Ain't nothing you're going to say in two hours that's going to solve this. Choose the seed, which is the word of God. And that's what he chose. And guess what? To this day, still in the wilderness. <laughs> still in the wilderness. My pastor is thriving in the things of God. You know why? Because the seed, which is the word of God, is the final authority in his life. And I encourage you to choose it every single chance you get. Let's look at thought number one. Receiving the seed of the word of God is a holy interaction that we should always welcome. Receiving the seed, which is the word of God, is a holy interaction that we should always welcome. Receiving it. Receiving it. Receiving it. Receiving it. Receiving it. If you're in ministry and you're in business and you're in partnership and you're doing business with people, so on and so forth, pay attention to how they receive the seed, which is the word of God. God told me, my mentor is this, my mentor is that. I said, what is, what is he mentoring you from? Because I know your walk with God. What is he mentoring you from? That's, that's, that's what I want to know. Because, because if he's not mentoring you from the foundation, the world has some wisdom for us, the foundation that you and him share, guess what? You need to really check that. And in this time, people are starting stuff, people are doing stuff, people are excited, all this stuff. And, 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 and here's the bottom line. Are you, do you have more excitement about the thing you're starting than the seed, which is the word of God, when it comes forth in your life? Are you more excited about the thing that reflects who you are than the thing that goes in you from the, from the word of God that is the word of God, that's, that's coming from God himself and changes your life if you're more excited about the thing? Then you are the seed, which is the word of God that changes you. Pause. Pause. <laughs> Don't go any further because you're going to have the, you're going to be like the, the, the guy who plays golf with the wrong swing, starting out learning with the wrong swing. Don't go any further with that, with that posture because you're going to get down the line and realize this thing let me down. This thing really let me down. Why? Because I gave it more attention than I did the seed, which is the word of God. And, and, and it let me down. It, it, it flat out let me down. So receiving the seed, which is the word of God, is a holy interaction that should always be welcome. I get so excited when my wife says, this is what God is showing me. Hey, just this morning, hey, I seen over there in John, uh, yesterday evening, hey, I was looking at the word, hey, I was listening to the word, and the word, man, I've never seen this, and this, 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 this. I get more excited about that coming out of her mouth than anything else she can say. There's things that excite me when she says that. I mean, it, it encourages me, so on and so forth. But, but, but for a husband to hear, oh, there's something higher than me and you. You're spending time with God. Now you're going to come preach to me what the word says. I receive that. Build me up. Show me what God is telling you. Show me what the seed, which is the word of God. Show me how it's changing you. Show, show, me, show me how it's going to make us better. Show me how it's, it's, it's making you a better mother. Show us how it can make me a better husband. Better. Show me. Tell me that. And she's not just talking out of the air. She's talking from spending time in the sea, which is the word of God. And I get so overjoyed internally. If she said, Derek, I want a six carat ring right now. I'll try to figure out how to get it for. Her. Why? Because she's placing a high premium on this holy interaction. And I know the more she loves God and she understands God, watch this, the more authentic our marital love is. It doesn't ebb and flow on good and bad times. It doesn't go up when the kids are doing great and down when they're not doing so great because the seed is constant. It has a foreverness to it. The word of God, it has a foreverness to it. And I know as long as she's in that thing, 
we're going to be as steady as she goes. The Lord cautioned me about six months ago. He said, never let come out of your mouth us four no more. That's a slap in my face, you guys being a believer. Who do you think you are, us four no more? That means you're not even thinking about nobody else. And that is a violation of your, of, of your uh, believing lifestyle. You must have your neighbors on your mind. You must be generous to the poor. You must engage other people. You must tell other people about me. Who do you think you are? I said, I said my God, I just said us four no more. He said, no way. Believers shouldn't think like that. You have a family that glorifies God, but you must keep the world on your mind. My son kept the world on his mind. I, kept, I keep the world on my mind, the just and the unjust. And for you to isolate yourself and say, us four no more, it's a violation of my love, and you need to come out of that and don't say it again, Derek. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. My goodness gracious. He said, I'm not done with you. I am just not done with you. He said, he said here's another thing. If you spend more time studying the Word of God to share the Word of God with the church, and you're not sharing my son that died for the world, for, for us to be saved, so on and so forth, and you're not sharing him with the world, get your priorities straight. Get your priorities straight. How in the world can you be born again three, four, five, six, seven years and you study the word of God to get revelation and not to share Jesus with somebody else? I, I, I just, I, and I was just blown away. And how in the world can we live like that? No, the seed, which is the word of God, goes in us, changes us, makes our life better, makes our marriage better, gets our finances together, brings us out of prison, raises us up uh, uh, to be viable citizens, brings us out of depression, raises us up to be, to be viable citizens, brings us out of divorce, raises us up to get a, 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 a marriage from heaven, so on and so forth. And then when we get there, all of a sudden, we don't even talk about it anymore. No Where was the value on the seed? That changed your life. What was the value on the seed? Where's the value on the seed that changed my life? The value is expressed as I express Jesus to others. Why? Because I know that Jesus is the answer and I need him. I needed a savior and I need a savior every single day. And I am not a poor mouth dude. I am not a, 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 a curl up, cave in, give up, quit type guy. But one thing I do know, no matter how strong I are, I am, I will always need Jesus Christ, my savior. Always. I'll always need him. And I, and, I, and I don't care who the person is, how powerful they are, how much money they got. I know if you don't have him, you don't have him because you don't know you need him yet. But you need him. Next thought. <clears throat> without exposure to the word of God, without exposure to the word of God, we lack insight into our spiritual life. Jesus asked the disciple, well, who do men say that I am? Blah, 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 blah. And Peter blurts out, ah, oh, this is who you are. He said, oh, natural flesh hasn't showed you that. My father, which is in heaven, showed you that, uh, Peter. My father showed you that. What is that? Without exposure to the word of God, we lack spiritual insight into our spiritual lives. See, you think you're just married to a guy. You think you're just married to a lady. You think you're just a son and daughter of a parent. But when you spend time in the word of God, you think you're just a, you think you're just a, a deacon to the pastor. You think you're just a, a minister to the pastor, an elder to the pastor. You think that's the, that's the nature of the relationship. But when you spend time in the word of God and you understand the seed, which is the word of God, there's something spiritual that should be happening. You should be gaining insight when they open their mouths into your spiritual life. But if you're not exposing yourself to the word of God, spiritual things sound stupid. Spiritual things sound dumb. We spend time in the word of God and we put the seed, which is the word of God, in us. When spiritual things come forth, it can fall on four ears and they don't even hear what you said or understand what you said. But those who spend time in the same word with the same seed as you do, something's clicking. Now something's clicking. I can remember when I was over marketing uh, at my previous church, you know, we was going, we was putting churches in, in Atlanta, two in Atlanta, New York, South Carolina, and I was over marketing, and I was sitting around the table. I was sitting around the table, 
And, 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 and we would try to figure out, okay, we're building this series, so on and so forth. We want to do this marketing. We want to do this, this, this. We need to send this to them. And I, I would sit around the table on a, on a Tuesday morning, and about eight of us, nine of us, and, and he said, okay, I, I, I want to get a series cover, da, 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 da. And I would, I would listen to people try to give their interpretation of the series, their design of the marketing cover for the series, and I would say to myself, you're not even listening to him. Way off. I speak first. You're way off. You, you didn't even listen to the replay. Oh, you did listen to the replay just to sit in here and say something. But I can tell, and trust me, he can too. You're not even, you're not even, you, did you, are you even in service? Or, or, are you, oh, 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 you served, but did you go back and watch the replay? Because on this marketing team, you need to know what you're talking about. You need to, you need to speak from spiritual things that he's given out. And it came around to me. And I knew I was on the front row. I knew I went to my Bible. I knew I was in sync with the series. I knew I looked at my notes from last week before I sat down Sunday. And I would say, the series need to do this, this, and this. And I, I really think the sale copy on the back should say this right here. Da, da, da. He would go, that's it. That's it right there. What was it? I was exposing myself to the word of God. I was exposing myself to the same scripture he was preaching. I was exposing myself to the same seed, which is the word of God, that he was preaching. And that's why he would not hesitate. Derek, I can't make it Sunday. What do you need me to do? Two hours before, I, I, I can't preach. Two hours before, go ahead and do it. Why? He didn't trust Derek, the natural Derek. He trusted the Derek who was exposing himself to the same word of God. And watch this. He could hear the confirmation coming out of my mouth to his ears. Go ahead and preach, Derek. Hey, I can't preside. Go out there and preside on the spot. Never a question. I wonder what he's going to say. Lord, have mercy. I wonder what he's going to get up there and preach on. Lord, have mercy. The last time he preached, I didn't hear. But I, who are you listening to? I, what are you even saying? What was that? We had the same exposure. Listen, without exposure to the word of God, we lack insight into our spiritual lives. When we open our mouths around our spiritual circles, we should have insight. We should, we should, we should be sounding alike, acting alike, approaching politics alike. We should say, hey, hey, sister, you're too deep in that. Come off of that. That don't even sound like God. Yeah, but I, I want my voice heard. You want your voice heard or you want Jesus seen? Which one do you want? Jesus can be seen if you handle that another way. Why? If men are drawn to him, when we exalt Jesus. We want to run them away or make them feel like, oh, you're just like me. And this time, the world should not look at us and go, you're no different than me. You're fired up. You're cursing people out on uh, uh, social media. You're throwing out the cursing acronyms. You're doing it. You're not I'm trying to be transparent. I'm trying to win people over. Jesus, John the Baptist didn't do that. John the Baptist wasn't trying to relate, coming down on their level and all this kind of stuff. Repent. <laughs> the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's one coming that's greater than me, and that's just the bottom line. But I don't have to adopt your worldly ways to get your attention to look at Christ. The seed, which is the word of God, is going to change your life, and that's what's changing my life. I'm going to maintain my stance. I'm going to maintain my composure. Why? The seed, which is the word of God, has literally changed my life. It continues to change my life. And I know it's going to change your life, but I don't want to, I don't want to witness to you out of an empty worldly cup and you come to Christ and you never change over the course. Why? Because I didn't lead with my lead foot, which is what? The seed, which is the word of God, changed your life, Derek. And I don't care if you're your best buddy, your best girlfriend, whatever it is. You, 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 you got a homeboy and the lady's got a girlfriend. Whatever it is. You better lead them off with the word is the final authority now. I love this church. I know that, but, but <laughs> you got to stay in your word. You got you to develop a relationship with Jesus. Why? The seed, which is the word of God, it's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. Somebody say hallelujah up in here. Next thought. When preaching the seed of the word of God, the spirit takes the recorded things of Christ and it shows it to us. When preaching the seed of the word of God, the spirit takes the recorded things of Christ and shows them to us. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. <clears throat> Amelia, please get this ready for me in the, uh, the message translation. James chapter 1. Now, you, well, here's what you got to know. The one thing about Jesus of Nazareth, 
He never came off the fact that I'm sitting here to do one thing. I'm about my father's business. It's just that simple. <laughs> Funerals can come along. People can die. I'm going to let you know I'm about my father's business. And you get offended at that, so be it. It is what it is. He always stayed constant. Hallelujah. Let's get James 1 up. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. James 1, 21. <clears throat> Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness. Never receive the word of God all mad and grudgingly and just, just contending with it. Receive it with meekness. Why? This is the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Again, we learned last week, we got saved confessing, Romans 10, 9 through 10. We got saved confessing that, believing in our hearts that certain things took place concerning Jesus. That is the way we got saved. And he says, receive the word the same way. That's how important the seed, which is the word of God, is. The only reason you call yourself a believer is the seed went in and it changed your life and you said something and you confessed something and you named Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That didn't happen out of the blue. That didn't happen out of placebo -ness. That didn't happen just because you was happy. It happened because the Spirit of God went in you and it provoked you to say things concerning the life of Christ to be born again. And guess what? That's how powerful the Word of God is. He says, receive it. It saved your souls. It placed you in church. Don't stop receiving it. It repairs your marriage. Don't stop receiving it. It softened your heart. Don't stop receiving it. It took you out of debt, and now you're out of debt. All your needs are met. You have plenty more to put in store. Don't stop receiving it. It took you out of depression, and now the joy of the Lord is your strength. Don't stop receiving the seed, which is the word of God. It took you from anger to a meek man. It took you from anger to a meek woman. Don't stop receiving the seed, which is the word of God. It took you out of separation to a marriage that's over the top now. Don't stop receiving the seed, which is the word of God. It took you out of suspicion and to believing the word of God and trusting people. Don't stop receiving the seed, which is the word of God. It took you out of offense to now you're on fire for God again. Don't stop receiving the seed, which is the word of God. It took your children out of darkness into the marvelous light. Don't stop receiving the seed, which is the word of God. Well, I, well, I don't know. It seems like I'm just so full of the word of God. Can I just take a break? No. Because he came that we may have in the overflow. Have it in the overflow, glory to God. Have life in abundance in the overflow. Why? We should have the seed, so much seed, which is the word of God in us, that it just overflows onto our children. It overflows onto our parents. It overflows onto our families. You know, you go around your family and you're shy to talk about God, check yourself. But I don't want to go around being a deep Christian, you know, around my family. You ain't got to go around being a deep Christian, but I can tell you what, you can go around and say God is really good in my life. And God brought me out of X, Y, and Z. You know, I look like this strong woman, this strong mother. But let me tell you, about three weeks ago, I was down and out. And it was God who brought me out of that. Let me see that scripture in the message. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Man alive. Somebody give me a hallelujah up in here. Hallelujah. Let's read John. Let's, let's read James. Hallelujah. James 1. There we go. So all spoil virtue and cancerous evil in the garbage. In simple humility, let our gardener, let our gardener, God, landscape you. me how? With the word. Making a salvation. The garden of your life. 
making salvation the garden of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back to that. Go back to that. So throw off all spoiled virtue. And in this time, in this election time, Democratic, Republican, red, blue, right, left, conservative, liberal, all this kind of stuff. I'm talking to believers right now. Throw off all spoiled virtue and cancerous evil in the garbage. And if that offends you, politics is your God. Throw it off. Put it in the garbage. It's cancerous evil. And in simple humility, let your God, our gardener, your gardener, God, landscape you with the word. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Making a salvation garden of your life. I spent the whole hour to let you know, let the word of God, the seed, which is the word of God, landscape your life with promises, meekness, gentleness. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Galatians 5. Woo! God is good and he's worthy to be praised. See, which is the word of God. Get, me, get, get it up for me. me there. Galatians 5, 20, uh, 16 through 23, I think. Galatians 5. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh wants us to get involved and argue and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and the Spirit of God is saying, shut up. I'm higher than your opinion. This I say, walk in the Spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another. It's like oil and water. People can't tell, are you born again or not? My God, is God the final authority in your life or not? People can't even tell. They should be able to if you put a premium on the seat, which is the word of God, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Next verse. But be led of the Spirit. Who? Glory to God. You are not under the law. You don't need 10 steps to know. Shut your mouth. You sound like the world. The Spirit of God will tell you that. You don't need 55 scriptures to, 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 uh, to, to, to know Walk in love. I don't care what you think about that. Be quiet. Why you be quiet? Stop doing little digs like that. Stop. That's, that's the flesh. But if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Next verse. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, watch this, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. If you, if, if you run out of adjectives and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Keep going. But the fruit of the Spirit, the gardener of our life, the one who wants to landscape our life. So here's the evidence that the seed, which is the word of God, is working in your life. Here is the evidence that the seed, which is the word of God, is working in your life. The fruit of the Spirit is evident. Why? We see the love. We see the joy. We see the peace. We see your long suffering. We see you holding your tongue when I see everybody talking about you. We see you, we see you holding your tongue when everybody's a gospel. We see you choosing the higher way. They go low, you go high. We see you doing that, long suffering. Gentleness. We know you want to cut people, but you don't. Gentleness, these are the evidence. Goodness, you're generous. You do good toward mankind. You, 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 you look at people like the, like the good Samaritan. You, 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 your heart is to do good in this world. Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Now you got to ask yourself, can your husband say that about you? Can your wife say that about you? Every last one of them. Because, no, you know, sometimes there's a, there's, there's, there's a husband that's all knee-deep in politics, all over the place, and the wife is just kind of sitting back 
And I want to tell you right now, you're embarrassing her. If you're both believers, you need to reflect Galatians 5 as a front. Not him or her over here like, man, let me just hide my head. My God. She talks more about politics than she do about God. And here we are confessing, confessing, confessing Christians, saying that we are following the things of God, so on and so forth. But she is the most vocal, out there, out of control, politicking, defying Galatians 5, 22 verse through, through, through 23, defying that in our household. And I told my wife, if you ever see me making a fool out of me and you and my family and my children, arguing about politics on social media. You have the passcode, deactivate my account. I, I have gotten too far in it. I don't want to embarrass y'all like that. I don't want my kids sent to the side like, Dad, you're embarrassing me. Now I got to say what I got to say because if I don't say anything, it won't be said. So I'm like, well, say it in prayer. But my God, I don't want my friends thinking, is your dad a pastor? Well, because my God, he's, he, he, he's all into this politics thing. I know I keep talking about politics, but here's the bottom line. In this season right here, politics has shown itself as people's gods in church. Why? It drives them out of relationships. They cut people off, so on and so forth. I said, as a believer, politics, people who could give a flipping flame about me. It's not going to cause me to lose relationships that it took me 20 years to build under the word of God. Forget you, blue. Forget you, red. Forget your donkey. Forget your elephant. Forget all of you. Why? You're not going to come in between me and my wife. You're not going to come in between me and my covenant brother. You're not going to come in between me and my minister. You're not going to come in between me and my deacon, me and my elder, me, me and my members, you, you, me and my partner, me, me and my man of, uh, 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 fellow believers. You're not going to do that. You're not that big. Because God owns the earth and the fullness thereof. He takes men's heart and he turns it. So I don't care who gets in office, what gets in office, what policy gets passed, what policy doesn't get passed. All I know is if God is going to be the gardener of my life that wants to landscape me with his word, his truth, I can't lose. And neither can you. Neither will your family. Well, this policy, this law, that law, it's, it's, we got to have, we gotta, I don't care what we have. All I know is God is perfecting everything that concerns you as a believer. He's perfecting everything that concerns your children as believers. He's perfecting everything that concerns your job as a believer. He's perfecting everything that concerns your city as a believer. He's perfecting everything that concerns your job as a believer. And you want to let the world cozen you into coming on their side and arguing their point? No, I don't have to argue that point. My point is the seed, which is the word of God. I see it. I hear it. I understand it with my heart, and it's converting me every single day. God has not forsaken me. He's for me. There's nothing else that's higher than that. The seed, which is the word of God. That should be a great restraint on believers to go, you know what, I can say this, but it's a waste of time. I, I, I could do this, but it's a waste of time. Why? I'm the one going to get riled up on this side of the computer. And they're on down the doggone feed. They're, they're going on about their business on something else. And I, and I have tainted my witness for Christ. They're going on about their business. I want to encourage you this morning. Make the seed, which is the word of God, the final authority in your life. Anything that comes up against you, anybody that comes up against you, hey, I, I got a saying. Talk about me. Oh, why don't you say this? Why don't you say that? I am saying. My gosh. You want me to politic. And I'm not going to politic. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to pray for believers, pray for sinners, pray for the country, pray for the government. I'm going to do that. That's, that's the only way I really can really have some effective change. That's really the bottom line. The seed, which is the word of God. It's this two-edged sword that's going to change this world. It's going to change this culture. It's going to change men's hearts. That's what we got to start preaching. That's what we got to start praying. Hallelujah. Next thought. Oh, the seed of the word of God is of divine origin. The seed, which is the word of God, is of divine origin. Its foundation is divine from God. It should never be in question. The seed, which is the word of God, is of divine origin. It came out of God. 
And let me tell you something. It's on your life. It's in your life. It's in your marriage. It's in your finances. It's in your body. It's in your relationships. This, it came from a divine origin. It's batting a thousand. It can't lose. The only way it can lose is we refuse to break up our fallow ground. We refuse to receive it. But when we're open to receiving the seed, which is the word of God, with clarity and understanding. See, my job as a pastor is not to give you certainty. It's to give you clarity. I can't give you certainty. Your husband can't give you certainty. Your parents can't give you certainty. But they can clarify things for you from the seed, which is the word of God, when your heart is open to receive it. Next thought. The word of God is supremely, supremely valuable. Supremely valuable. This seed is supremely valuable. Approach it. Why? Because you are of royal priesthood. God wants to do marvelous things in your life. God wants to do above all you can think or imagine. He says, you can't even think what I want to do with you. You can't even imagine how I want to bless you. You can't even imagine how how I want to lift you up. You can't even imagine it. But he says, look, the word of God has to be supreme. Not church. Some people say, man, I've been in I, I grew up in the church. Where's the evidence? Now, if you grew up in the church, you should have grew like Jesus in wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and men. I don't see none of those traits in your life. So stop hanging on. You grew up in church and tell me this. I grew up in the seed, which is the word of God. The seed has matured in me over the years. Because growing up in church, you can say, ah, I've seen some things, you know, some things I didn't want to see, so on and so forth. And, you know, I kind of got a bad taste in my mouth because man just like me slipped, man just like me divorced, man just like me manipulated, man just like me. Well, man is imperfect. But if you grow up in church thinking that, you're going to get older and you're going to think, man, I don't want nothing to do with that church, man. Church folks, they just, they, they, so-and-so-and-so just got a divorce. So-and-so-and-so teenager doing this. Yeah, we're not perfect. But I tell you what, who is the one that we run to when imperfect times hit our life? Jesus of Nazareth, he's perfect. (laughs) I can't be around them hypocrites. I don't want nothing to do with them. What are you? You're talking about yourself. You're a hypocrite before you come to church. You're going to be a hypocrite in the church if you think that. Why? Because if you think you're going to come to church and be perfect all your born again life, no one is perfect. You're going to slip. Dip, fall, say stuff you ain't got no business to say, think stuff you ain't got no business thinking. No, one's imper- no, one, no one is perfect. Jesus Christ is perfect. Next thought. Let's <clears throat> learn to rejoice when the seed of the word of God exposes parts of you that's not of him. That's his love for you. Learn to rejoice when the seed, which is the word of God, exposes parts of you that's not of him. That's his love for you. The seed, which is the word of God, is not just designed to go in and give you revelation about the word. The seed, which is the word of God, is designed to go in and expose parts of us that's not of God. Rejoice when that happens. Why? That's his love for you. Rejoice. You know, when your husband says, you know, you, you, you X, Y, and Z, nine times out of ten, he's batting a thousand. He's trying to tell you something. What it is, you just don't value his, you just don't value his appraisal of things you're trying to hide. That's quite evident. But the word of God, when it exposes it to you, rejoice. Rejoice. That's God's love for you. Don't just rejoice when I say you're going to get out of debt. Rejoice while I'm preaching. God says, you got an ugly mouth. You know that? You, 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 you rejoice when, when, when the word of God says, your husband's a special man to put up with your attitude. What's happening? The word of God is exposing something to you. Your wife is a special woman to put up with your attitude. <laughs> the word can do that to you. It's exposing parts of you, and it's like, man, a lot. Yeah, he's a special man that puts up with your attitude. Women say, I got my husband under control. He won't even touch 10 cents. He won't spend. He won't do this. Don't do that. Oh, you got him. You, 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 you think he's five years old up under your roof? Let's see how long that lasts. I'd rather tell my wife, you can spend anything you want to and trust the God in her that she's going to do it accordingly and not run the house in the ground than to say, if you touch $5, I need to know. If you do this, I need to know. No, I trust the God in her. I trust the seed of the word of God in her. Why? Because that kind of trust says, oh, 
I guess we did need some pots and pans. Oh, I guess we did need uh, uh, this cooking utensil. I guess we did. I guess we did need. I, I, I guess we needed the ceiling fan. I, I guess we needed. And she ain't, she don't spend crazy, but I'd rather have that than to have her shaking in her boots to buy a pan and call it. We're in agreement. You're not in agreement. The word of God is exposing something to you right now about you. You are not in agreement. You are controlling and fearful. Trust that man. Trust that woman. Amen? We got two more thoughts and we're out of here. <clears throat> See it as unconditional love when the word of God makes you uncomfortable with, with what's not of God in your life. See it as unconditional love when the word of God makes you uncomfortable with what's not of God in your life. The word of God will make you uncomfortable. When he's exposing, when the seed is exposing things that's not of God, it's not. It's not. It, 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 it's, just, it's just not. It, it's, 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 it's not of God. You know, and the closer you get, the closer you get to your inner circle, <clears throat> your holy of holies, which if you're married is your spouse, the closer you get to that line right there, you you got to have a lot of discipline in the word not to not to feel like it's okay if i say this to him it's okay if i say this to her it's okay if i do this in front of him it's okay hey uh on the taxes um hey <laughs> i'm just saying how long did they stay with us well it says, it says five months right here let me ask you again how long did they stay with us for the year? Well, it says they got to stay uh, X amount of months with us for us to even, you're not hearing me. How long? <laughs> and what they're trying to do is, I want you to go ahead and lie. I want you to go ahead and manipulate the system with me. Don't you dare do it. No, we ain't doing that. No freaking way we're doing that. No, we're not claiming a doggone thing. Why? Because, see, there's an unconditional love when the word of God makes you uncomfortable with what it's not of God in your life. Sweetheart, and I can't believe, oh honey, I can't believe you're trying to ask me to do that. Don't get offended at her. Don't get offended at him. The word of God is exposing something in you. It's just not of him. Grow in the things of God. Amen? Were well, you blessed by the word today? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give God some praise. Give God some praise on this holy interaction, the highest one, the seed, which is the word of God, that went into your heart went into your ears, and now the Spirit of God is, is, is loving on you right now. Amen? If you want to be born again, click on that tab. We can get you born again. If you want to rededicate your life, click on that tab on your screen. We can get you rededicated. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit, click on that.